This is KC Sports Network, proudly presented by M Prize Bank. Well, and welcome into another edition of Three Ma. I am John Kurtz, joined by Cole Manbeck, and uh, today a very special guest. We are joined by Brad Underwood, of course, a K State grad, the current head coach at Illinois, and uh, a one time Kansas State Wildcat assistant coach as well. We just heard a lot of stories about him from Frank Martin recently, so uh, we'll, we'll try to get the other side here. From Brad, but uh, Brad, we appreciate the time in joining us. We do have to give a shout out to our friends at Holiday Distillery. Please raise your glass of Ben Holiday bottled in Bond Bourbon uh, or 360 Vodka and support our friends at Holiday Distillery. We appreciate their help as always. But uh, Brad, thanks for joining us. I know we were just chatting about how how crazy life is as a as a basketball coach in D1 these days. But uh, how are things going at Illinois coming off of a, an incredible season where you guys won 29 games and a, a Big Ten tournament championship and, of course, went to the Elite Eight? Yeah, it's been busy. Um, you know, I, I think we go through uh, – it's a pleasure to be on, guys. It's always good to be back and, and uh, uh, you know, enjoyed our, our time in Manhattan so much. And and um, it's great to be back with you guys. So, But it, it, it's, it's a um, – uh, it's a crazy time, you know. It's it's different. Um, I think it's um, you know we we were a very old team this year, so we we knew we were going to have to replace a lot, and uh, uh, that's okay. Uh, you know we've we've got two guys back off our team uh, that um, uh, that played, and so. We've got, uh, you know, we were in the portal hard. Uh, we had, we had signed a couple high school kids, uh, big kids that we're really excited about. Uh, but uh, yeah, we've we've been into the portal pretty hard. And and you know, a year ago for us, we we were very specific uh, trying to find age in the portal. We signed three grad transfers. Uh, all three of them impacted us at a really really high level. Um, this year, we're more into uh, uh, the talent uh, aspect of finding players in the portal. So, you know, I think you find three things in the portal, you, or you or you pay with 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 your athletes with NIL and all of that. You you're either going to pay for continuity, talent, uh, or age. And uh, uh, this was a year we needed to go get some talent. We knew we had two players back uh, who were NBA type players, and Coleman Hawkins and and Terrence Shannon. Uh, we had a good nucleus of guys back who had had been uh, guys who played a little bit. So, but it's just it, it's been really active. You know, it starts the the Sunday or the Monday after Selection Sunday, and you know, even through the tournament, you're 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 very involved in the portal. And uh, uh, we just had a young man leave campus yesterday, so uh, we're still uh, you know our 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 new guys are are making their way in this weekend, so. Uh, it's pretty much nonstop. Hey, Brad, how how gratifying, rewarding was this past season? You guys go twenty nine and nine. Obviously, won the conference tournament <clears throat> with the Illini back to the Elite Eight for the first time since two thousand five. We know the proud history of the Illinois program, but you get them to the Elite Eight this last year. I'm sure that had to be a pretty gratifying moment. Yeah, you know, and and it's we've been really good for for the last five years. The first two years here, uh, taking over were. were really a rebuild and, 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 and restructuring, trying to lay a foundation of what we're about. Um, you said it, this program's got great history. Um, it's one of the winningest programs in the, in the, in the history of the big 10. So, um, great fan base. Um, you know, we've, we've, we've done so much with our infrastructures in terms of redoing state farm center eight years ago. Uh, we just moved in in September to, a completely remodeled gutted practice facility that's we spent 41 million on that's incredible uh so it's it's basketball is important at illinois we've been really good we've been a one seed uh and, and got knocked out the first weekend um you know we 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 uh, you know to to move on to advance i i thought this team was a final four team that just happened to run into uconn in the elite eight uh uconn was to they're that were different. Uh, but, uh, um, we built this team for that. Um, you know, I'm disappointed. I think we win a national championship at the university of Illinois and, and we're striving for that every day. And, and, um, as, as pleased and satisfied as, as we are with an elite eight run, uh, it was a good run. Uh, you know, there's still more out there and, and we're shooting for that. 
Well, taking a program to heights that it has not been to in a long time, obviously, is not new to you with, with what you did at K-State when you were here with with Frank. And we just talked to Frank not too long ago, as I mentioned. So take us back like to those days and what it was like. You know, Cole asked you about the satisfaction of doing this at Illinois, but to be able to help do what you did at, at your alma mater at K-State, how, how much did that mean to you? Yeah, that was that was that was huge. Um, you know, it, it was something that, um, um, you know, when, when hugs hired us and, and it was, it was so incredible and that's not to downplay anybody else who had been there prior. I'm not trying to do that, but just to see the, uh, the ignition start with the fans again and with the, the interest nationally that, that, that hugs brought and, and, uh, even though it was so very short lived, his impact on the program was huge, um, mainly because of the recruiting class he left, and um, and then to 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 have Frank step in, and uh, um, you know, really hard times to be very honest. I mean, that first year you you've got you've got Bees, you've got Walker, you've got you got Jake, um, and and those guys don't know anything. You know they they're they're really good players, but they don't know what it's like to be a good college player. And 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 here we are, we make it we make an NCAA tournament run. Uh, you know, Mike is arguably the best player in college basketball. Um, and and for Frank to handle all of that and be a part of that was 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 really really fun. Now that I look back on it, it was really rewarding. Uh, it was great for our fans, the sellouts, the the the. The ignition, you know, lamp and light was on uh, again. Uh, so that was, um, man. I've got a, I've got such great memories and and great staff. We had we had a lot of fun. We were connected, uh, and it was fun to do that with a lot of people that I knew. You know, my wife's a Kansas State grad as well, and and uh, just to be around family, to be around friends, uh, and 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 see that get going again was 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 a pretty special moment because I, I and I truly think college ex, the college experience is about creating memories and 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 creating moments that people never forget there were a lot with that team and and uh uh that was that was pretty special yeah well I, I want to ask about I'm not sure that I ever got the full story on this like when when Bob sought you out to bring you on staff like when hugs went out to get you on that first staff like how how did that come together? What was the the connection there? And kind of just take us through what that that process was like. That's a long time connection. I'm the coach at Dodge City Community College. Really young, uh, actually, my K State playing days and 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 I guess name recognition were involved in helping me get that job. But uh, I knew nothing. I was, gosh, I was such a bad head coach back then, and. You know, you think you know everything and you don't. And but um, I, I had to go prove to myself that I could that I could recruit. And and back then, the the Kansas Jayhawk Conference was filled with the best basketball players in the country. It was the best JUCO league out there. It was uh, you had McDonald's All Americans that didn't qualify, and they're they're playing JUCO basketball in Kansas. So I had to go prove to myself that I could I could recruit at that level. I'm 24 years old um and we went out and got some guys and uh um you know hugs was at cincinnati um and uh had a guy uh art long uh 6 out of rochester new york and and he, he ended up playing for hugs in cincinnati and you know became probably just as famous for punching the horse uh in downtown cincinnati if you gotta look up that story it's a pretty good one but but um Great player, played the NBA. Hugs recruited him. Hugs didn't didn't send assistant coaches in to recruit him. Hugs came in, you know, from Cincinnati to Dodge City. We would go to lunch. Um, you know, we'd go to dinner after a game, uh, and it was just uh, the start of a relationship. And we always got together at the Final Four. We always stayed in touch. And now I'm fast forward. I've left Dodge. I'm. I've, I've spent 10 years at Western Illinois University as an assistant, and now I'm back in the junior college ranks at Daytona Beach Community College. Hugs owns a, a, a place or a 
second home in New Smyrna, which is right outside Daytona. And uh, so he would come down in the summer. Uh, at that time, coaches could come on to ju- junior college campuses and, and recruit. We had good players there. Uh, so he's back around. And then when he got let go at Cincinnati, uh, he came down to New Smyrna. And we just stayed in, we stayed in contact. It was close. I invited him to come watch our practices, hang out as much as he wanted. Um, and then uh, we had a really good team that year. We had um, uh, one of the best play, one of the best guards in the country, and Blake Young. Um, and and uh, so you know, Hugs gets the Kansas State job, and and it's it's an opportunity for me to 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 come back home. Uh, it's my alma mater. Uh, I think he saw some value in that. Um, he had he had had a great staff in place, uh, you know, with with Frank. Um, you know, obviously bringing Delonte Hill and his connections uh, were were huge, and and uh, you know, then hired Eric Martin, the, the final piece of that. So it was just an opportunity. It was a different role for me coming in as a, as a director of operations. Uh, but uh, the opportunity to get back to K State was was a huge part of why I'm sitting here now, and um, it was um, it, w- it was it was just a blast. It was it was great. Well, this show is always brought to you by our friends at Home Field Apparel. I've got the uh, Everyman a Wildcat shirt on here today from Home Field Apparel. But honestly, that's that's kind of an old one. They've had like two or three K State drops since then, so you can get fifty plus different K State designs there. At homefieldapparel.com, you can use promo code 3 mod 23 to get 15% off your first order there. This is the gear everyone's wearing these days. Retro gear, Copper Bowl logos. Hey, we're talking here to a guy in, in Brad Underwood who played for Jack Hartman. You can get a Big 8 Champ shirt from the 70s uh, there at homefieldapparel.com as well. Or the old school like shooting shirt, probably one that uh, the Brad wore at one point in time. So homefieldapparel.com, promo code 3 mod 23 to get 15% off your first order. We appreciate you supporting KC Sports Network by listening to our podcast. You have helped us become the highest ranked Chiefs podcast network in 2022 and 2023. And don't forget about our daily Substack newsletter, the best written analysis you can find on the Chiefs straight to your inbox every day. KCSN.substack.com. How much do you keep up with uh, K State these days, Brad? Obviously, you're a very busy guy coaching Illinois, a prestigious program, and the success you've had there. But I, I know you love K State, and I'm curious how much you keep up with just K State in general, K State football, basketball, everything. We'll see. We're playing Virginia, right? Yeah. All right. There you go. All right. So I'm 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 uh, I'm sitting in the airport waiting to catch my flight in Grand Cayman. And I look across directly at some guy's holding his phone. He's got an Arkansas Razorback shirt on. And uh, I just, I just holler. I said, "You watching the, you watching the regional?" And he's like, "Yeah, we're getting crushed by, you know, we're getting by Semo or whoever they were, they were playing." And he goes, "I can't believe we're losing." I said, "Well, I'm on the other side of that. I'm, a, I'm, I'm, I'm." you know, whatever. And, uh, so he was, it, it's fun to see guys and it's fun to follow. I talk to Kleiman a lot. Um, uh, not a lot. I see him a lot. I'm, 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 I worked with Chris and, uh, uh, Chris and I crossed paths at Western, at Western Illinois. We actually played a played a good amount of golf together. So I'm, 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 you know, it's a, the athletic world's a small world. Um, obviously Jerome was at, at, uh, at Baylor all those years with Scott, Scott and I are really close, um, and talk a lot. Scott was, when I was at Western Illinois, Scott was an assistant at Valpo. Uh, we were bitter rivals, but, but good friends and, and, uh, kind of grew up in the mid con together, cutting our teeth. Um, but, uh, you know, absolutely. We've got so many friends there. And uh, so we follow K State um, a, a great deal, and and uh, you know excited for what their baseball program's doing. Really excited for um, you know K State football and and what it looks like it could be uh, this fall. No pressure on Chris, but uh, you know we're ex- we're expecting a deep run. <laughs> yeah, we we for sure are. Hey, who, who's the better golfer? You or uh, Coach Kleiman? Well, he'll talk trash and say he is, and I'm going to talk trash and say he never beat me. So, uh, 
he the football's a lot smarter than we are right now though football's got their mandated dead periods and all of this and <laughs> And, and so he finds time to go play. And uh, I actually talked to him while they were in Vegas for for Long Kruger's Coaches versus Cancer event. And K-State's got such a big uh, uh, input and in, in, in imprint in that event. But I could not go this year uh, due to my daughter's um, uh, graduation. And so it was, um, uh, you know, the, we, we usually have a little, little fun, a little good ribbing. Uh, as we as we play a couple of great golf courses in Vegas, but he's pretty good. Yeah, that's what we've heard. Yeah, I, I do want to ask you, Brad, when you took the case when you came to K State and you took the director role with Coach Hugs, what was the biggest challenge that you guys faced as a staff in that first year of turning the program around? Teaching everybody how to win. You know, Hugs is Hugs is if he's nothing else, he's he's an incredible winner. And and getting guys to understand how hard it is to win, uh, how how um, uh, getting everybody to play for each other, uh, getting guys to to understand that yeah I think we had we had, you know Cartier Martin was left, uh, David Hoskins, uh, Clint Stewart, uh, then Hugs obviously uh, uh, you know we brought in some guys. Uh, but it was it was just teaching the the winning mentality, and it was the everyday work, and it was the um, the 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 commitment to the weight room. It was just it was a work related mentality that we had to instill. And you know the the, the old cliche: good things happen to those who work hard. And and you know, hugs was um, one of the most consistent people I've ever been around as a head coach in terms of his approach towards work and, and our players. And it was very consistent. And so I think there was, um, there was so much to do from the player side of things, getting that happen. I think that, you know, hugs was the perfect fit at that time because he was, he connected with so many K staters you know, Hugs is a simple guy. He liked to fish. He, you know, he'd throw a dip in and, and, you know, he'd have a beer with you. And, and, and so it was one of those deals where, you know, there was a lot of that on the outside and it was reuniting the, the, the K state fan base. And, and I was a big part of that with Hugs. Um, you know, a lot of the, the assistant coaches, uh, had never been to Manhattan, didn't know K state, didn't know the history, didn't know, you know, Cotton and Tex and 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 and, he, and Jack Hartman and those those connections and how powerful it was and um, but uh, so you had to touch it on every on every level. But it started with the players and it started with work and and you remember, I mean, we you know tell the story all the time. I mean, we inherited a schedule that we had to go to North Dakota state and play a game. I mean, I don't think Jerome Tang's going to North Dakota state to play a game right now. Uh, nor would I at Illinois. I, you know, and they almost beat us. Uh, you know, we had to go to Colorado state and play and they beat us. We had to go to the pit and play New Mexico. Um, you know, those were games. We had to go to Cal. Um, you know, it, it was just, we were not a really good basketball team uh, early in that season. And and there was a maturation. There was a, a work ethic that had to happen. And yet I think we were uh, – I think we finished fourth that year, which was a huge jump. We got hot. We, we started to play really well late. Um, you know, one of the most memorable games I was a part of was, you know, Cartier Martin's uh, shot to beat Texas at Texas with Durant, um, you know, and, and that team became really good. But that was all hugs, and and just the everyday drive to get that team to to work hard enough and to play together enough to learn how to win. It was really interesting coming off of that season. We were talking to Frank about. He told us that he was like on the way to the airport with hugs when he found out that he was going to take the job at West Virginia and hugs had to call him and be like, Hey man, go back. And uh, obviously we know how that worked out. He took the job, but from your perspective, what was that 
period of time like when you found out that that he was going to be leaving and trying to figure out how everything was going to fall into place after that. Yeah, that's one of those like, oh crap moments. You know, you're like, man, we have just done something so special. And it's different for me because I was, I'm a K-State guy, you know, and it was like, man, hugs, you can't leave, you know? And, and I, yet I understood the lure to go home and, and, and what that had to be for him. And I, and, and I truly believe, and, and I'll continue to say this, Bob Huggins loves Manhattan, Kansas. Bob Huggins loves K-Staters. And I, I don't think he would have ever left had it not been for that, but it was hard. And, and I always, I, I tell this story, my, you know, my wife, Susan and, and Hugs just was magnetic. He, and, and watching him in his black leather coat pull his little roller bag, walking to the airport. It was on, we were sitting on the couch and it was on the news. And I look over, my wife's got tears. And, and, you know, she goes, I just love that guy. And I think we all felt that. And there was a, there was a level of unknown. Uh, we had this wonderful recruiting class. And, and I think it shows what, an unbelievable human being Bob Huggins is. Uh, one, having his influence, getting getting Frank the job. But second, keeping telling that those. I mean, you got Michael Beasley, you got Bill Walker. You know, nobody knew Jake was going to be Jake at that time. We knew he was a good player, but it doesn't take him. He recruited him. He spent all those years, and he said, no, you guys stay right here. You're in a great place. And he he orchestrated making sure those guys stayed with Frank. And, and uh, you know, not many people are going to do that. And, uh, but it was, it was, it was a whirlwind. You know, it happened fast. It was quick. It was, and, and then all of a sudden, here's, here's Frank thrust into, uh, you know, the head coach's role, and the good thing for Frank, he was he was uh, he was a really really good leader, and he had led before. And so I think it was you know you give John Leifold credit. Um, I think he realized that Frank had been had had seen success at a very very high level in the high school ranks. And, um, you know, he knew how to coach, he knew how to build. And, um, so, you know, it was, it was crazy. It was hectic. You know, I was unsure. Am I going to West Virginia? You know, is Frank going to move me up? Um, you know, and, uh, you know, that was a, that was a, a unbelievable day in, in the Underwood household when, you know, Frank said, you know, Hey, here you go. And uh, you're off and running, and 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 you're back, you're back coaching, and um, and on the road. So it was um, uh, it was a crazy time. It was people, people. It was a stressful time. It was hard. Well, you alluded to it. You guys had a an incredible team that year with a bunch of talent: Michael Beasley, Bill Walker, Jacob Pullen. Are there good? Is there a good story that comes to mind? Something like behind the scenes that we didn't see or didn't know about that team and and everything that happened that year. When you start to think back to the 07-08 season, there are so many. Um, you know, I I always I always go back, and so much was I spent a lot of time with Mike. Um, you know, working Mike out and 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 in practice and. And Mike was such a joy to coach because he he just loved basketball and, and he loved to work. Um, you know, obviously his his um, probably his level of understanding how good Kansas had been, and and making the quote, you know, we'll beat Kansas here, there in Africa, wherever we play, and we're like, holy cow, what are you doing, Mike? Um, and then he did his damnedest to go back that up. Um, but, uh, you know, it was, there was, there was, there was such a level of, of naivety, uh, with that group. And, you know, Bill got off to such a horrible start shooting the basketball. 
I think Bill missed his first 16 threes. And I and 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 that then he got a little gun shy, and then it became, uh, you know, he that guy worked so hard at at, at making threes and just kept shooting it. Then it was, you know, uh, uh, Jacob Pullen's game as a freshman in Manhattan against Lawrence, scoring twenty, and then having the worst game of his career the next game against Missouri, uh, and Frank hardly could play him because he was so bad. At, I mean, just. Uh, but the 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 ups and downs that happened with freshmen uh, were were evident. Um, but gosh, it was so fun. That team was so talented, um, and it was it was. Uh, you know, I, I like to tell the story, and I I'll get it wrong. It's either Winston Salem State or Savannah State. One of those. We're playing a team that's not very good. And Mike, in one of his rare moments, and very didn't happen very often, is not very inspired to play against these guys. And so he has like six and a half. We're 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 str- we're we're up. It's a way closer game than it should be. And and I go off at halftime. And Frank hasn't even gone to the locker. I just go in, and I mean, I'm I'm going nuts, and and you know, so I I make the statement. I said, yeah, I'm walking off the court, and two of their players are saying, Michael, who? Michael Beale, he stinks, you know, and 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 I'm just challenging Mike, and um, you know, Mike was one of those guys. Okay, you know, okay, you know, whatever, and um, so we have the first media timeout of the second half. We come out of that media timeout, and I think that it's a 14-minute mark. Frank subs Mike out. And Mike turns and looks at him. He goes, what are you doing? What are you doing, Frank? And Frank literally looks at him, and he goes, I am so tired of the PA announcer calling your name that he goes, I just need to get you out. Mike had scored 18 straight to open the half. And it was Michael, you know, the, I, I can't do the the PA deal, but it was Michael Beasley for two, you know, it was Michael Beasley for the, and, and, and so Mike comes out and he sits down and he goes, now ask him Michael Beasley who, and, and, it, and it just deadpan. So we're, Mike says that at the media and at, after the game, he said, yeah, coach told me one of the guys comes up and says something about, you know, Michael Beasley who, and. And uh, so their coach stops me as they're getting ready to leave. And he goes, which one of my knuckleheads <laughs> said that? And I said, coach, don't worry. None of your guys said that. I just made that up to get Mike going. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, and uh, so it's, you know, there's there's moments like that that you, you don't forget. And, and uh, uh, you know, obviously it was a, it was a, it was a fun trip to Omaha that year in the NCAA tournament. And, and, you know, it was kind of the bill versus, uh, OJ with USC. And, and then we ran into a great Wisconsin team, but, um, you know, the, that, that year was, a, that year was, that year was fun. It was, it was, a, it was, and that group was so talented. Well, you heard Brad Underwood talk about his golf game and, uh, going on some golfing trips with coach Chris Kleiman at Kansas state and how, uh, how they play together. Well, you know, I wouldn't be uh, surprised if they use some PXG golf clubs on occasion. If not, we need to tell them about PXG golf and uh, a location in Overland Park as a golfer for years. I've been hearing PXG say nobody makes golf clubs like they do, period. You know what? They're right. I went in for a fitting and saw for myself. I went in and swung the PXG Black Ops driver, total game changer, no longer have to sacrifice distance. For forgiveness, no matter how good the tools getting fitted can take your game to a whole new level, and they'll even give you a dozen golf balls free just for doing it. The world-class team of PXG experts will analyze every aspect of your swing with every club and give you feedback in real time on how to improve, and they did just that when I went in there for my fitting, never been fitted for clubs before. Didn't know what to expect when I went into the PXG golf location over in Overland Park. And it was a tremendous experience for everything from when I walked in the door. The customer service was phenomenal. They offered me a water. They repeatedly were making sure I was taken care of, that I was comfortable. Went into the back and then hit a hundred plus golf balls, hit, hit a lot of shots with the irons. They, uh, they were fitting me for that as well. And then the black ops PXG driver, 
Uh, they also fitted me for, let me hit about 50 balls with that, analyze the swing. All the data analytics were there for me to look at and see how my swing was looking, see where the ball was going. They got the mat in front of you with the, the image of where the ball is traveling, if you're slicing, if you're drawing, if you're hitting it straight, what's a good shot, what's not. You got the analytics on the side over on the big board computer monitor that shows you the velocity, spin rate, loft, elevation of your shot, et cetera, the distance that that shot would have traveled on estimate a ton of fun and a great experience. And they continued to adjust to clubs. And by the time my, my swings were done, they had me fitted just right to accommodate my swing and make it look far better. The ball was going straight and traveling farther by the time they were done with it. So go check them out. Go check out the fine folks at PXG Golf over on Overland Park at 7517 West 109th Street, 19th Street. They made me a believer. They'll do the same for every golfer in Kansas City. Visit pxg.com slash three to schedule your fitting at PXG Kansas City. Get fitted for any club and you'll get a dozen free golf balls. That's pxg.com slash three to schedule your fitting. pxg.com slash three Limit one dozen golf balls per person. Promotion ends June 30th. Other terms and conditions may apply. Steve C store for details. We appreciate you supporting KC Sports Network by listening to our podcast. You have helped us become the highest ranked Chiefs podcast network in 2022 and 2023. And don't forget about our daily Substack newsletter, the best written analysis you can find on the Chiefs straight to your inbox every day. KCSN.substack.com. I know, Brad, as a coach, you guys often say you treat every opponent equally, every game is equal. But I have to imagine for you, the love you have for Kansas State played here, coached here that that KU game to end the streak in Manhattan in 2008 took on a little extra meaning what what did that mean to you and what just take us through that night hell I was a part of it as a player I mean that you you think about how ridiculous that streak is to not win in your own building I mean that goes back to Ahern Fieldhouse and 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 you, you win in Lawrence. We all know how hard a place Lawrence is, but Kansas State to go on there and won. But to have that streak be that long, it's just absurd. And, you know, we definitely had the best player on the court in Mike. Um, and, and, but it was, it was, I remember the hype around the game more than anything. And, and and it was so fun to see everybody that excited. And um, you know, this is crazy because it's it's you know the court storming after the game. You know, good friend of mine, Garth Gardner, big K State guy. I mean, and, and I'm going to put him on the spot because it's but it's worth telling. I mean, he literally throws up on the court storming. And it's probably because he'd had way too many beers. <laughs> but he throws up because it's so packed and so hot. And right on Frank's chair where Frank had sat during the game. And, you know, it, it, it's it's those crazy moments. And it's the, um, you know, the, the students. And it's amazing how many people I've come across over the years that were at that game that talk about that game being one of the one of the one of the great moments in their experience they were students and and how how that impacted their experience at K-State and but uh you know hell Bill was good they were rolling um that was that team was really talented um you know I remember Mike telling me before the game I said you know Darrell Arthur is really good he goes, Coach, he knows he can't guard me. He goes, that dude's never guarded me all through AAU. He goes, I own him. And he, and, you know, Mike could make those statements. And, and, and he did. Um, but it was just a, it was a, it was a great college basketball game. And, and, and a lot of great, t- great memories were, were, were had that night and in, in, in that court storm. Well, Brad, I mean, John and I were students. We were storming the court that night, and uh, that was right before I came on the beat the year before that. Uh, that was a hell of a night. And I, Frank told the story just, I think that moment really resonated with him because he went out to do the post-game radio show, and he saw grown adults with tears streaming down yeah. their face. And, and he just, it hit him how real and how unique and special that moment was. So uh, really grateful. Look, I mean, growing up, 
as a K-State basketball fan, I just didn't know if that was gonna gonna happen, to be honest. There was an apathy around it. So that night meant a lot. Yeah, the great and the, the the great thing is you weren't you weren't close to Garth. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I'm glad I wasn't around Garth. I, I imagine he was sitting in the uh, the court side, probably riding the refs or uh, really nervously, yeah. uh, you know, no, going there. But but that to me, that's what college sports are about. They they create those incredible lasting memories, and and uh, um, you know, I think to Frank's point, it was I was always a tried to be a voice for our staff and our coaches of the in, in incredible history of K-State basketball and and you know and and Tex was still alive and Tex would come by practice but Tex winner really you know that and, and I mean and and Cotton Fitzsimmons and and you just you go and 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 the coach I played for Jack Hartman and and how good they were and how the brand the K-State brand was so synonymous with great basketball and great coaches long Kruger uh, you know and what and what he did not just as a coach but as a player and and so I was always trying to be a voice for that and I think those moments like that where you see the fans into they that was that was reality that's when it hit that you know this really is a program that's got tremendous history tremendous uh pride in what its basketball has been and um you know it was it was it was great to see that and for frank and delante and fig and and and, and everybody andy astley and all those guys to 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 lay witness to that well that is part one of our interview with brad underwood much like the uh frank martin interview that we did recently we're going to break this up into two parts uh but there is much more to come many more brad underwood stories And just some great reminiscing, not only about his time as a coach, but even his time as a player. So stay tuned for that. Make sure you're locked in for part two of our chat with Brad Underwood. But thanks for listening to another edition of 3 Mom.